I'm Mr. Beat. Is it time for a divorce? Oh, don't worry, I'm not divorcing you. I'm talking about this national dialogue that's happening right now in the United States. According to GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, the solution is a national divorce. She tweeted, we need to separate by red states and blue states and shrink the federal government. Everyone I talk to says this from the sick and disgusting woke culture issues shoved down our throats to the Democrats' traitorous America last policies. We are done. Well, that's CNN. That's fake news. There's no way that an actual member of the U.S. House of Representatives tweeted that. Oh, I guess she really did tweet this. To be fair, she later clarified that she didn't want a civil war or even secession to happen, but still, this got me thinking. What if the United States got a national divorce? What would a national divorce look like? Well, in her tweet, Representative Green said, quote, we need to separate by red states and blue states. First of all, this is not as easy as it sounds. How would we define red states and blue states? The two biggest political parties in the United States are the Republican Party and Democratic Party, and it's been that way for at least 168 years. So I think most of you knew that already, but sometimes I get new folks watching, okay? Anyway, I assume, quote, red states are American states that have a majority of people who identify as Republican, and, quote, blue states are American states that have a majority of people who identify as Democrat. But that's not as easy to figure out as you might think. Sure, you could go by political party affiliation for each state, but most Americans are not strongly affiliated with either major political party. They may lean one way, but tens of millions of Americans vote for both Republicans and Democrats on election day. I bet you didn't know that, did ya? There are only four states where the majority of residents are Republican, and seven states where the majority of residents are Democrat. Also, as I stressed in my American Urban Rural Political Divide video, most Americans who live in urban areas tend to favor the Democratic Party, and most Americans who live in rural areas tend to favor the Republican Party. However, even within cities and rural areas, neighbors often have different political views. My own neighborhood has Republicans and Democrats living in it. They get along for the most part. But I get it, there's always going to be one political party that dominates in a state. So let's just go with how an entire state voted. But according to which election? Here are the red states and blue states based on governors. Here are the red states and blue states based on state legislatures. Here are the red states and blue states based on the United States Senate. But that wouldn't work since six states have one Republican senator and one Democrat senator. Here are the red states and blue states based on the results of the 2020 presidential election. For the sake of this video not going on forever, let's just go ahead and use that map. Say the country split into two based on the results of the 2020 presidential election. So we're using the election electoral map. Oh crap. Maine and Nebraska, why you gotta do me like that? Okay, so Nebraska and Maine both split their electoral votes, but the majority of electoral votes in Nebraska went Republican in 2020, and the majority of votes in Maine went Democrat in 2020. So, sorry Nebraska, you're a Republican state, and sorry Maine, you're a Democratic state, at least for this hypothetical divorce, okay? This would split the country into 25 red states and 25 blue states. Uh, I'm not joking here. So what if they were two different countries? Well, first of all, the borders would be weird, but I imagine they would still be fairly open. But what would it look like otherwise? Eh, let's look at how they compare today to predict how they might look in the future. Hey, I guess we can turn this into a compared video now. Red states and blue states compared. The blue states have more people. 
killed about 22 million more people. That said, the blue states have an average population density almost seven times as high as the red states. This is because the red states make up a much larger land area and are much more rural overall. I guess you're probably not surprised by that one. The blue states have a higher cost of living. That said, there are dramatic variations within both blue states and red states. For example, the cost of living in Austin, Texas is much higher than it is in Detroit, Michigan. Related to this, the poverty rate is higher in the red states. Related to this, the violent crime rate is higher in the red states. More blue states residents have college degrees. Overall, the blue states tend to have a higher GDP per capita than red states. In fact, nine of the 10 states with the highest GDP per capita are all blue states. And at the bottom five states by GDP per capita are red states. The blue states also tend to have higher median household incomes. In general, the blue states tend to have more diverse economies. Major industries in the blue states include technology, finance, healthcare, and education. Major industries in the red states include energy, manufacturing, agriculture, and military. Military? Yep. And on average, the red states receive more federal funding than the blue states. The red states also tend to have more federal land than blue states, especially when it comes to land managed by the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service. While the red states depend more on the federal government for funding, the blue states tend to have higher levels of debt. The blue states are also more generally ethnically diverse. The red states tend to be more religious than the blue states. But finally, here's a similarity. The biggest religion in both the red states and the blue states is Christianity. That said, 65% of residents in the red states identify as Christian compared to 53% of residents in the blue states. The life expectancy tends to be higher in the blue states. Most of the mountains are in the blue states. Ah, but the red states have more coastline. And here's another similarity. Both are increasingly prone to natural disasters. On average, the red states receive more precipitation than the blue states. More of the blue states have legalized marijuana. More of the red states have restrictive abortion laws. And now we're getting into politics again, so I will end it there. I did ask ChatGPT which states value freedom more blue states or red states, and here was its response. The idea of freedom can mean different things to different people, and it is difficult to make a definitive statement about which states value freedom more, as political beliefs and priorities can vary widely within both red and blue states. Additionally, different individuals and groups may have different ideas about what constitutes freedom and what policies and practices are necessary to safeguard it. Some individuals and groups may prioritize individual freedoms, such as free speech, religious liberty, and gun rights, while others may prioritize collective freedoms, such as access to health care, education, and economic opportunities. Ultimately, debates about freedom and its importance in society are complex and multifaceted, and cannot be easily reduced to simple political or geographical categorizations. Wow. What a response. Good job, robot overlords. And this response got me thinking, perhaps making this video was a waste of time. You see, pretty much every American values freedom, and I'd argue most Americans agree on most political issues. You just wouldn't know it due to certain opportunistic, attention-seeking politicians. The day after Representative Green's controversial national divorce tweet, she elaborated with a Twitter thread. And I'm just gonna share some of that with you now. Red state schools would bring back prayer in school and require every student to stand for the national anthem and pledge of allegiance, while blue states would likely eliminate the anthem and pledge altogether and replace them with anthems and pledges to identify ideologies like the trans flag and BLM. I don't think she's talking about Bureau of Land Management there. Uh. 
Yeah, I, I just don't think that every red state would bring back prayer in schools. And I don't think every blue state would eliminate the anthem. Red, red states, states would likely have highly supported law enforcement officers and well-funded agencies. Police officers would be well-trained, paid, equipped, and seen as heroes once again, not portrayed as racist thugs. In blue states, who knows? Police could be anything from unarmed social workers to doing what Democrat lawmakers have been calling for all along, abolishing the police. Abolishing the police. I don't see red states and blue states acting that much differently. In fact, while researching for this video, I found out that funding for the police in both red states and blue states was about the same. There's no evidence that they treat the police much differently. So she's attacking a straw man. Remember the straw man fallacy? Hey, speaking of the straw man fallacy, in a national divorce, the left could achieve their dreams of total and complete lawlessness. Ah yes, we all know that blue states love lawlessness. But hold up, she didn't write blue states. She wrote the left. Yeah, let's uh, go back up to the beginning of this Twitter thread. Tragically, I think we, the left and right, have reached irreconcilable differences. I'll speak for the right and say we are absolutely disgusted and fed up with the left cramming and forcing their ways on us and our children with no respect for our religion slash faith, traditional values, and economic and government policy beliefs. Oh crap. Well now she'll have to define what she means by left and right. Goodness. Well, I also made a video about that. The bottom line is I'm not worried about a quote, national divorce happening anytime soon. You see, red states and blue states kind of need each other. Heck, state borders in the United States are often barely noticeable anyway. I know I stressed a lot of the differences, but these days most states have way more in common than differences, whether politicians like to admit it or not. Sure, Americans seem as divided as they've ever been in history, excluding the years right before the Civil War, but that's mostly because of the rhetoric we hear from a select few in the media who like to keep us all riled up and angry at each other. Mostly over culture issues, by the way, because that's how they make their money. It's quite profitable to keep us divided. In fact, it's why you clicked on this video, isn't it? So what do you think about this idea of a national divorce? I wanna hear from everyone, no matter what kind of state you're from. Blue states, red states, purple states, Latin American states, European states, African states, Asian states, Australian states. Sorry, we forgot about New Zealand again. New Zealand states. 